Hey everybody, and welcome back to Curl Space Program RP0. This is our uh, Twitch recap from last week, where we have decided to go on a money-making endeavor and uh, complete a milestone contract that has been kind of sitting on the docket forever, and uh, we just never got around to taking care of. But the payout on it is pretty good, and uh, we can combine it with another... Um, three Kerbal to a low Earth orbit contract. I'm speaking, of course, about the have ten Kerbals on a single spacecraft uh, in orbit at once. And uh, with the capabilities of the SKS uh, and some slight modifications, we can very easily put ten Kerbals on board, fly it to a low Earth orbit within the specifications of a low Earth orbit contract, and uh, walk away with a very handsome payday, something like uh, 900,000 um, it's just straight profit, really. So uh, we had the SKS rebuilt after its last flight. The two engines that were melted and slated for replacement have been replaced. Uh, the cargo bay has been emptied. And so now we just need to add a uh, a crew carrier to accommodate for the uh, the extra room. And, you know, that, that's pretty much it. We can go ahead and get rid of this docking port. I thought about adding extra life support supplies. Uh, turns out we, we don't need them since... Um, Really, we just have to be in orbit, but uh, the thing that we don't have is enough Kerbals. So we would uh, move on to the astronaut complex and uh, hire in a, uh, a new Kerbal. I think uh, Billy Barrett is going to be the uh, next engineer to join the program, and that gives us uh, 10 available, although this does include Yegor, Diana, Sally, and Lewis, who have all been to Mars before and should be uh, slated for their victory tour slash retirement. Uh, just to make sure that we don't kill off uh, accomplished and important Kerbals. Although I think now that we have more and more Kerbals who have visited Mars, uh, we may be laxing that requirement up to four stars instead of three. So uh, with the uh, SKS Heavy rolled out to the pad, we will uh, load on our ten Kerbals and then uh, proceed to launch. We'll just check our uh, contract stipulations. Uh, this is pretty much an empty SKS, so uh, we have a large abundance of uh, Delta V and uh, a pretty good off-the-pad TWR, uh, verging on the almost uncomfortable territory. We probably should have uh, loaded something in the cargo bay to kind of even this out or maybe even accomplish another contract, but Mm. Time was a little short, and uh, we need to start generating funds quickly so that we can start production of our uh, Mars lander stuff for our next Mars window, which is uh, approaching a lot faster than uh, I am really comfortable with. We really only have two years to prep for these things, and, well, turnaround on an SKS typically is about 30 days plus mission time. Um, on the uh, Shurukens, it's a bit less, so we can do quite a bit of money generating, but at uh, roughly 400000 per uh, necessary DN6 launch uh, times four, maybe five launches at this upcoming window, we, well, we, we got to raise a bunch of money. Um, and we are, as I mentioned in the last episode, kind of uh, rubbing up against the... Uh, orders of the fail state for our Enceladus landing contract, and if that fails, we're going to take a very large hit uh, to our finances yet again. So it's very, very important that we get uh, rockets built, because uh, they can take away our money, but they can't take away our launch vehicles. So, uh, launch of this SKS going pretty smoothly. Uh, very distracted me, made it uh, much more difficult than I had any right to, and now we're going to have to uh, tail stand this uh, wiggly SKS uh, just a little bit to make sure that we don't uh, run out our time to Apogee, uh, while hopefully staying within the bounds of the contract. So, yeah, here's our, here's our big tail stand as we uh, try to push that time to Apogee out uh, just a bit further and still only going about four kilometers per second and um, uh, we've got some we've got some time and speed to make up for so slowly as we start to push the, push that apogee out we'll bring our nose uh, back down of course the engines can't say there's about 10 degrees means that uh, 10 degrees above horizon is actually firing straight down the horizon because you know off center uh, center of thrust versus center of mass makes for a weird looking ascents versus uh, traditional rockets. Um, 
but we will end up pushing our Apogee just a little bit out of spec on this run, but no worries, that's what OMS is for. So hopefully we can, we'll make a nice uh, easy transition on that as we just go ahead and kill the engines with uh, a minute of runtime left in them and then uh, jettison the EFT to uh, burn back up in the atmosphere. So we'll just uh, open up the forward section of the cargo bay. No point really in deploying the aft section. There is our crew record, even though we're not in orbit. We're just in space. I We could have done this with a suborbital thing, although we didn't have one built, so it actually would have been a bit more expensive. Uh, there's a solid light on the OMS engines for our circularization burn, our quick camera change, and we'll just go ahead and bring this up to the minimum specified by the contract of uh, 190 kilometers. Now, since our Apogee is just a little out of spec, I think we need to get to below 325 kilometers. We'll just warp around to the other side of uh, Earth and uh, let our nose drift naturally into the retrograde vector before giving those OMS engines a quick puff. And there we are. We are within the contract bounds. However, the contract doesn't even think we're in orbit. This is rather frustrating. <laughs> Extraordinarily so, but uh, we'll get our solar panels angled into the sun so that we can, uh, I don't know, keep the lights on for this party bus uh, and let our 10 Kerbals just enjoy their 13 days in a specified orbit, although uh, our contract doesn't even seem to think that we are in an orbit, so that, I mean, a small problem. But uh, to try to rectify this, we are going to uh, F5 and then F9, reload uh, the craft in its current position. And hey, look at that. It uh, now thinks that we are in orbit and we have reached the specified orbit. However, the timer is not counting down. So it's always something. Uh, I love you, KSP, but seriously. Um, I didn't want to F5, F9 again just to see if that timer was going to start working. Uh, we are within the specified orbit, and we just need to stay here for 13 days to satisfy, I guess, the spirit of the contract. So we just uh, focused on Earth, hit the time warp, and uh, let the clock start ticking. Uh, we'll certainly shoot past the 13-day mark just to be of, of good faith, I guess. Uh, and then uh, wait for our window to uh, make our landing approach. Now, we had <laughs> our last shuttle flight. We overshot by quite a bit. But from a polar orbit, it's a, it's a little harder to, to manage. Um, I was really hoping that coming in on a more traditional approach to uh, Cape Kennedy would be a little easier. I decided the timing on that one was going to be just wrong enough. So we'll uh, go ahead and let it take another day. And then uh, start to set up our approach in this orbit, maybe the next orbit. But uh, while trying to, I don't know, figure out the timing, I guess, of uh, where to plot our re-entry maneuver. Um, I have it on good authority to go for uh, off the coast of Australia. And then uh, doubted myself and moved it way back to put our periapsis in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Uh, trying to account for the inclination change uh, as the planet rotates beneath us. And Florida will not be where Florida is now when we hopefully get to Florida. So, mm. yeah, we shot way long last time. I was counting on us having a much better glide slope this time because we are so much lighter. We'll actually slow down faster in some small hope that maybe for the first time in like well more than a year I could actually try to put something down on a runway at some point sometime somehow although I think really the key to me doing that is just going to be flying shuttle flight shuttle flight shuttle flight and just practice 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 which isn't really a bad thing as long as you can stick a landing anywhere uh, you make money off the contract these things have a pretty quick turnaround we could probably get some good revenue going and uh, get the practice necessary to maybe actually sometimes land I don't know within the same zip code of our runway um, there's our deorbit bird so we're just gonna let the batteries get that last little bit of charge uh, from the Sun before we uh, pack up the cargo bay start to uh, ship 
fuel aft for uh, balance reasons. We can keep that butt planted on our reentry. And well, for the rest of this reentry, I will uh, go ahead and turn you over to old me who has gone ahead and brought up atmospheric autopilot, uh, you know, just, just in case. So we're going to do what we can while, you know, as much as we can. This won't have much of an effect for a very long time, but we're just going to try for it, I suppose. Lock you open, put you over here. Lock you open and put you over here. Oh no, I don't need craft settings open. I just need to get ready to hit the master switch uh, when it becomes time. So, ooh, all right. Let's, um, <laughs> they're all hung over. They're all worn out. Flying a multi-hundred million dollar spacecraft down from orbit after performing the very valuable scientific experiment of what happens if you have a party bus in orbit for 13 days. Only the real science here at CCSA. Where are we? Way out over the Pacific. So let's bring this under control just a little bit. Like 45 degrees should be very well sufficient, right? Okay. If you could just hang out somewhere near there, maybe we'll just switch to atmospheric autopilot a little early. SAS off, master switch armed. Much better. Much, much more stable. Still better than Levels and Borman's 14-day Gemini mission. Yeah, at least this crew has room to, like, get up and walk around and move. I... Man, there's a... There's one of the backup Gemini pods at, like, the local science center. Because they were, they were built here locally. And I, I could not... I mean, it's like sitting in a Mazda Miata for fucking two weeks. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Oh yeah, those are the ablative thruster ports. This is n normal. Okay, I just I saw things burning and panicked. Yeah, most importantly, room to poop, a working toilet, probably two of them, because there's ten people on board. And the last thing you want to do is have one toilet for ten people. <laughs> like I could not imagine living in like a two seat sports car for two weeks without being able to like get up and stretch or move around like that would that must have been just so horrible <laughs> oh there are uh there are some thruster ports that are hidden within this nose Docking port that you can't see. I don't know why I'm showing it to you, Beastly Pig. There are some thruster ports there whose uh, ablation is entirely intended. And we are getting overheat warnings on two of our RS 25s. It's not serious yet, but it is there, so we may at some point have to straighten this out. How oh, is our. Uh, our line has shortened up by a lot. Uh, I think we're going to California, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> N key thrusters. Yeah, those. We don't have any struts in the bay to burn off, I don't think, unless there's like residual struts I always forget to remove, which is very, very possible. That is leaning a little further out than I would feel comfortable with at the moment, so we're going to adjust our angle and uh, try to just fly it a little straighter.
Okay. Hopefully that should keep our engines out of the airflow. It's deadly re-entry being too accurate. Just landed LAX. They're fine with it. Yep. Um, if we make it there, we got a long way to go. And it looks like Mexico. You boys like Mexico? Yeah, I like how like the little taps of the RCS at the nose completely correlate with the overheat warnings oscillating on the uh, engines two and three. Just that little bit of wiggle is just enough, you know? It's practically an airliner. <laughs> Party bus becomes taco truck. Oh no. <laughs> And so, yeah, that's just clouds. There's no way we're coming up on Gulf of California yet, right? Still pulling five kilometers per second. Yeah, we'll be lucky to put this down on a beach. 4.9. Ah, I undershot it by a very long way. So we're going to come out of time warp and we're going to try to angle in, drop our nose a little bit, reduce our profile into the wind, see if we can't extend out this... Uh, Cross range a bit. I mean, we do have plenty of fuel. We can always light our AJ-10s. Well, we can't because they're not ulaged. I don't think we can ulage them. So I guess we'll just have to see where we end up. But uh, I'm going to put at least a dollar fifty down on. Scraping into the Gulf of California. Probably. Three kilometers per second. Oh, maybe not. Um, maybe if we sail. Sorry, party bus. I think your party has just turned into a pool party. Yeah, way, way, way undershot. We can get this nose down. Let's move some of this fuel forward. <laughs> the, the real space shuttle? Dumb. I highly doubt it. I think the, the bailout. <laughs> yeah, the real shuttle would have hit water like a pallet of bricks. I It really would not have gone very well. Yay, flame effects. Maybe we can generate some lift and get an, at least one good skip off of this. This is what E tops is for. Ouch. Yeah, I don't think we're making landfall. Okay. Emergency helicopters en route. Ah, I really don't want to start pitching it down and try to, uh, Shuttle slash contingency plan, pick one. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll say I think the, the answer, Beastly Pig, is math and people who are good at it. It's definitely not me. It, yeah, it does. They just kind of like fall magically into place and then pull up at the last second and there's a runway underneath them. I will have to do that, Wookie. Thank you. Okay. Atmospheric autopilot has determined that we need to be uh, much more nose level, which means we can pitch into this and try to push some fuel to the back of the tanks for our OMS. Switch. 
witchcraft. Fair. Yeah, no, this, she wants to fall. Eratonemesi. <laughs> Oh, it is holding hard back on the stick, so we're actually going to move some fuel aft. Hope this helps. Can we get some... Nope. Whoa! Hey, buddy. Whoa, that one glowed up. Did we actually have a solid ignition on one of these? That would have been neat. Not that time. Alright, we'll ride what we can. It's not quite time to start making uh, ditch preparations, but I think uh, getting rid of as much of this very toxic fuel as we can beforehand would be a good idea. So, while we're still supersonic and still have a decent amount of altitude, let's go ahead and trade a little of this altitude for some speed. Dang it. I was really hoping for like a very nice runway landing. It would have been neat, huh? No, we're we're gonna ditch in the Pacific. Come on, give me one more. Give me one more. Nope. Okay. And what? Paper and feed lines. Dang it. Ugh. All right, well then. We're going to slow down a little less. does make me very nervous. Uh, life card one is still uh, fresh in my mind and very painful to think about. But we're going to go ahead and run these tanks dry and then uh, I guess we'll do what we can. Certainly not going to extend our range far enough to make a difference, but we'll be lighter be more worried about feed lines and vapor. <laughs> now we're in business. And picking up speed. things the space shuttle's not supposed to do. <laughs> I don't know why I check. Like, we're not getting there, Crash. It's time to stop. We are uh, in the Pacific Ocean. Damn it, Beastly Pig. <laughs> <laughs> We're here in Gulf of California, Mexico. Target. <laughs> and engine flame out. So now we just, uh, we wait. I mean, we might as well just dive in and take, get this over with, right? There's no real point in prolonging this. We just... It's all about 
this, the vertical speed. We keep that under control, we keep our crew alive, everyone comes home. We complete the contract, which we're going to have to do through Alt-F12 anyway. Because the timer never started. But y'all saw it, we completed it. It's not illegitimate if they survive, <laughs> if one of them survives. Yes. Oh wow, down to 9 kilometers already. Alright, we're doing pretty well. Do the job, I get paid. Excellent quote. Ah, I miss Firefly. See, now I'm going to be sad. No. Beastly pig. I... Well, you have a homework assignment. Oh, point blank. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> Welcome to my crap shoot of a space program. It was the I Miss Firefly. That's what got it, right? Alright, 2.7 kilometers. Yeah, this is really low cloud cover. 1.3. Let's get rid of these so I can have uh, more space to see my impending catastrophe. And flare it up. We're going to sink, bleed some of this speed into distance because we need to come in much, much slower. Like, as slowly as we can is generally the goal here. <laughs> whoop, whoop, pull up. Whoop, whoop. Uh, do I still have roll control on these as if I really need it? I was just thinking, like, let's do a whoop, whoop, barrel roll. And I'm like, mm, nah, I don't have, I probably just don't have very good roll authority. That's a bad call. <laughs> That's what made it a bad call. Now we have good roll authority. Sync rate, sync rate. Yep, 16.3. We're just gonna let this coast in a little bit. We're still bleeding speed, so 300 meters. Let's get in nice and low. 200. All right, let's flare it. I'm not going to do a barrel roll, Beastly Pig. Stop. Now I need to pay attention. 100 meters, 175. Let's bring it up. Still sinking. No, nope, we're climbing. We're definitely climbing. She's a porker, but man, she can glide like a champion. Hundred and forty meters. Let's get this down sub one hundred so that if we have to just dip into it, because one hundred and thirty five, we're gonna hit our stall speed at some point. like to be going much slower than this. Yeah, sync rate millimeters per second. That's what I want to see. 116. We're doing pretty good here. Four, 15 meters. Oh god. What the hell just happened? Why did we 
jump. Thanks, drag shoots. Oh, oh. God, just under the limit. Eight point something on impact. Ten would have killed him. <sighs> yeah, if water's gonna kill me, I'd prefer it to be pretty also, Raptor. <sighs> Yay, yeah, no funerals. Indeed. Oh, well, we lost the docking port. But no fatalities. And that's what matters. So as soon as the uh, SKS would uh, slowly drift itself to something that approximated a stop, still moving at like 5 meters per second, uh, we would go ahead and hit the recovery button, get paid for our contract, and uh, dry off our astronauts. So uh, that's going to do it for this episode, everyone. Thank you so, so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.